What's up YouTube? This is the Common Sense Professor here and I am going to talk about a subject in third person. I'm going to look into this quick tutorial on why third person is important. I'm going to give you some examples of third person, first person, second person sentences and then we're going to go back and look at how to write them in third person. Okay, so let's get started. So why is third person important? That's one of the first questions I hear a lot of students uh, say. A lot of people think when I when we do papers and research papers or uh, any type of professional or academic papers, the importance of third person, I think this is stupid. Well, a lot of times students are used to writing narrative form, uh, which is generally in first or, or second person. And this is just new. Uh, it takes them getting used to. But one thing you have to remember is that whenever you're writing in academics, third person point of view is usually a lot clearer and allows the writer to come across as more credible. And that's important, especially when we're writing research papers or, or for uh, journal articles or, or any type of professional writing. Due to this reason, third person point of view is considered the best in academic writing. But most academic essays, uh, this is something to remember, should always be written entirely in third person. There are some exceptions to this. Okay, and one thing that I would say is uh, it is always better, in my opinion, to write in third person and then uh, unless your professor or journal article or whatever you're writing for tells you otherwise. The second person should generally always be avoided. Sometimes, on rare occasions, first person should be used when using personal examples uh, that help support claims, um, different things made in the essay. If your professor tells you to write in first person or it's okay to write in third person, always, always um, do what your professor wants, okay? Because when it comes to a grade, that's what's important. But um, try to avoid first and second person. And we're going to look at how you recognize first and second person here in just a minute. In addition to enhancing credibility, another reason to write primarily in third person is because frequent changes in point of view can cause confusion to the reader. And that's one thing that's important when we look at this is because uh, whenever you write first person, um, you're generally, you can, of course you're talking about yourself in first person, but you can also include uh, the reader in this first person. When you're writing in second person, you're talking directly to the reader. And this can cause confusion, and actually, you can make claims that aren't true by writing in first person. I'll show you what I'm talking about here in just a second. So here's a couple of sentences that I wrote just to give you an example of, of first person writing. Okay, so let's look at the first sentence. I completed multiple experiments in the mechatronics research. Okay, notice I, right? Um, it's talking about the writer. The writer completed multiple experiments in the mechatronics research. Okay, that's first person. The next sentence is, the data is evident when we need to produce less carbon monoxide in the United States. Now, if you look at this, notice we, okay, that's first person, but what are you doing there? You're including the reader into, uh, you're basically saying that the reader needs to produce less carbon monoxide in the United States. Well, what if the reader is from China or Japan or somewhere like that, and you are actually including that reader into this, assuming that, that everybody that's reading this article is from the United States, okay? So that's wrong. So first person point of view makes direct references to the writer, okay? First person occurs primarily through the use of the pronoun I. Now there's more words we're gonna look at in the next slide uh, that should throw red flags up. Okay, one thing I want you to do is whenever you're writing these papers is whenever you see one of these words, these first person uh, words, it's gonna throw a red flag and you're gonna say, hey, I can't do this. And I'm gonna show you at the end a way to, if you're writing in Microsoft Word, a way that you can actually have Microsoft Word look for these words for you. But uh, first person point of view that's used when a writer is writing about himself or herself, uh, there may be times when it is okay to incorporate personal examples in an essay. Again, I, I made this clear, but I do not encourage it. If so, the first person will be used. However, this is important. It is generally best to avoid referring to yourself as the writer. Statements like I believe or I think tend to weaken writing and are better when written in third person. That's important to remember. I see this a lot with my students. They'll be writing a paper uh, that's supposed to be written in third person or something and they say, I believe. Well, what are you saying when you say, I believe? You're saying you're making a statement that is not credible and that is not backed by facts, okay? So that's important to remember. Um, everything we're writing in professional papers, uh, whether it be research, 
whether it be um, a thesis or just a paper written for your, uh, let's say your engineering class, um, and you say, I believe, that's a narrative. Honestly, the reader does not care what you believe. The reader wants to know the facts. Okay, so remember that. Now, let's look at these red flags. Okay, uh, these are warning words. When you see this, throw up a red flag in your mind and say, hey, I should not have this in my paper. Which brings up across another point, always, always proof your paper before turning it in. Always. I would even suggest to have somebody who is, that you know, that's close to you, that's, that's good at writing, to proof your paper for you. Because a lot of times, you, whenever you're proofing your own paper, uh, you write like you talk, generally. And so a lot of times when you're reading it, you might not, be able to understand some of the mistakes that you make because that's the way you talk, it's the way you communicate. Well, if you have somebody else look at this, uh, that helps. So these are the red flag words. Okay, if you have I, me, my, myself, mine, we, us, our, and ourselves in your paper, you're writing in first person. You need to change that. And I'm going to show you some ways to change that. Um, again, it takes some practice uh, writing in the third person. But these are your red flag words. Okay, and we're going to look at these again at the end. So now we have to ask a question, what is second person? Well, let's look at some sentences that's written in second person. Here's one of them. In order to prepare the data, you will need to first create a clear analysis plan. Did you catch one of that second person? The word you, okay? In order to prepare the data, you will need to first create a clear analysis plan. What if the reader is not going to prepare be preparing the data. Why did you include the reader into this? Again, never write in second person when it comes to professional uh, papers. Here's a second example. As an engineer, you will need to follow the National Society of Professional Engineers, NSPE, Code of Ethics. Okay, so what would be the problem with this? Well, what if the reader is not an engineer? Okay, as an engineer, you, the, the writer of this is assuming that everybody reading this paper is an engineer which is folly, okay? So writing in second person requires the use of the pronouns you, you, and yours. Those are your red flag words I'm gonna look at in a minute. This point of view is used to address the audience in technical writing, advertising songs, and speeches. Okay, so here's the thing about this. I don't know if you ever thought about this before, but many of the slogans that we see on commercials, they're written in second person because they want to include you. Why? Because they want you to come to the restaurant or they want you to buy their product. And so they're including you second person into this. So let's look. Think about Burger King. Have it your way. Second person. Okay. They want you to have it your way and give them money for their products. Right. Um, Hallmark. When you care enough to send the very best. Okay. And obviously, they're trying to play the shame game there, saying if you don't buy Hallmark cards, you don't care about the person to send the very best. But those are second person. We should avoid those in technical writing. The red flag words for second person, you, you, and yours. Okay? Red flags. Now, so we talked about what's first person, what's second person. Let's look at how we should write in third person. Okay? Um, here's your first sentence written in first person. Now, Remember, this was in first person. This is a way, I, I told you, there's a way to write in first person when you're including um, the, um, the writer's data or, or information to help the article. Now, originally this was said, I completed multiple experiments in mechatronics research. The way to correct that is with the term, the author completed multiple experiments in the mechatronics research. Okay, the author of the article, or, or there's different ways of writing this. But notice how this does not bring, even though you're still talking about the same person, okay, if you wrote this article, you're still talking about you, but this is a third person accepted form of writing to include what you're doing, your experiments, in, or whatever it is, uh, your, um, um, your experiences into this. So let's look at the next sentence. The data, and that's a misprint, it should say the data validates, I'm sorry about that. So the data validates that Americans need to produce less carbon monoxide. Remember that first sentence said um, that as Americans, we need to produce less carbon monoxide. 
you see the way, again, if you left out the word is, uh, the data validates that Americans need to produce less carbon monoxide. It does. It takes the, the reader out of this sentence. And so it's not assuming that all readers are American. Okay. Okay, now I'm going to take a minute. I'm going to show you a tool that you can use in Microsoft Word. I'm using Word 2017. So if you have an older version, you might have to Google this and look this up. I think it's the same on the older version. But it's real simple. So we are all familiar with spell check in Word. So if I was to type a, um, a word that was misspelled, we get the underlining of the word, right? Well, I'm going to show you how you can have word detect first person um, just like it a spell check. It's a different color underline, but here's what you need to do. So you need to go under File, Options, and this is really hidden, so I'm going to warn you about that. But you go under File, Options, and then we're going to go under Proofing, and then if you go under the Correcting spelling and grammar in Word. Under this section here, uh, we're going to go under settings. Again, it's really well hidden. Okay. <clears throat> now this is divided up into grammar, and there's some good things in here. So you need to make sure that some of these are checked when you go through this. I'm not going to go into a lot of the other. We're just focusing on first person here, but capitalization. I don't think that's checked. Our fragmented run-ons. This is something I see a lot of. Um, a lot of students make mistakes with this is a lot of times um, they create run-on sentences uh, where it should be two or three sentences. They have one long sentence that's too much and so that's a good one to check. But what we're going to do is we're going to go under style and we're going to look underneath here under here it is right here uh, towards the bottom uh, use of first person. I'm going to check that. I'm going to hit OK. Hit OK again. Now, if you notice, I'm going to write this first person sentence. Okay, it took it a second, but now you see this is underlined, right? Let me make this bigger so you lose your C, but um, this is a first person I. Okay, that's one of our, our red flags, and it underlines that. So that's just a real uh, simple trick that you can do in Word to help you identify when you're not writing in third person. There is also other apps that you can uh, download and add in to Word. Uh, if you just Google um, uh, apps like uh, Grammarly is one of them. Uh, it's a free app. I think there might be some advertisement with it, uh, but there's a lot of apps and things you can use with that. But Word has... Um, uh, a lot of tools that helps us in writing and I'm going to create another video to show you how to use Word uh, when you're doing citations uh, within Word. But, but anyway, we'll stop here. So this is uh, how we use Word to help us detect when we're writing, not writing third person. Three, two, one.